Good afternoon. Uh, this, this is Bronson's By Any Means Necessary Fantasy Baseball Talk for Sunday, August 21st. I'm filming a, little, a day early because I'm going to start focusing on football next week and uh, I don't want to have... I've noticed that when I, I try to upload too many videos in, in a short span, they don't want to work too well. So if I upload this baseball one today uh, and then potentially do a football one tomorrow and then, you know, one a day, I might be okay. Um, but trying to do multiple videos in the same day doesn't necessarily work. So, um, I'm outside in my backyard. You see my backyard. Uh, and you can hear some music over at the school. I don't know exactly what's going on over there. I checked because I can kind of see right over there in the corner. Um, there's like a, a Hispanic family. They're kind of just dancing over there. I don't know what's what's going on. I don't know if she's practicing or practicing for the dance team or something or what, but a bunch of kids having fun, whatever. So you guys get a little treat of, of music as well. And yeah, I've done nine drafts. So I said I'd start talking football after 10. I'll probably do number 10 tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, but definitely by Tuesday. I'll have a my first preseason football video out. Um, but my last three drafts have been outstanding. I'm really, really happy with the way they turned out and can't wait to talk about them. Also, my first draft was my most, uh, still, still love the first draft I did. Uh, so out of the, the nine, the last three and the first one have been my favorites so far. Um, yeah, really excited for football this year because this will be the first year in a long time where I will have Sundays off. Like, I'll be, it'll, it'll just be great to just be able to know to, to, I don't have to work on Sunday if I don't want to. So I can, I can hope potentially, uh, because I don't have to go to UPS on Sunday morning. I get up early, you know, and start doing breakfast, you know, from seven-ish to 10, you know, work a couple hours, eight to 10 or whatever, 10.30ish maybe at the latest, and then watch football all day. <laughs> And then skip the Sunday night game because the Sunday night game annoys me anyway. It's always East Coast teams, and it's always annoying ass, smug ass Chris Collinsworth calling the game, and I don't want to hear him. Uh, so the Sunday night game usually doesn't interest me, unless of course it's my Vikings or something on a prime time game. Then I then I usually watch it, but I mean I'll watch it if if, if you know if I you know sometimes I watch it. Like usually I've been watching it. The last couple of years because I work Sunday during the day, so Sunday night, the Sunday night game on Fort Philly is the only time where I get to actually watch football on Sunday. So um, this year I won't have to do that. I can choose to watch football the the games during the day and skip the night game, which dinner time is the most lucrative time to be doing Uber Eats anyways. So to easily skip Sunday nights. Work Sunday mornings before the games and Sunday nights after the game. Still make a decent amount of money on Sunday. And then of course I'll have Thursday nights off for the Thursday night game because I usually like to watch that. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 come, I'll get into a routine pretty quickly, pretty easily and not lose out on too much money. I'll just, you know, usually lately I've been taking Mondays off um, I'll probably stop skip, taking Mondays off. And, uh, you know, I may not take any days off. It's just, it's nice to, to just go. It, it's a totally different, I think I talked about this in a previous video not too long ago, but it's, it's just nice mentally to know that, like, I don't have to go work for eight hours a day. You know, like, it, like a, like in the, when you have a, a regular job, you have a scheduled amount of hours that you've got to be there. So when you're committing to working on a day off, you're committing to a certain amount of hours. But now, if I want to take a day off, or you know, I don't have to take I don't have to take a I guess work all seven days because I don't feel like I'm overworking myself because I'm working only as long as I want to every day. So it's a totally different mindset. It's great. Um so looking forward to football season a lot. Um, I still gotta figure out which freaking Vikings game I want to go to. I'm way, I'm pushing it out way late. Um, there's just there's a lot of games I want to go to. 
Uh, I just want to go to, I forget which home game I want to go to because that's the top of my list of things to do is go to a Vikings home game. Um, and maybe I'll go to another road game too. Um, got to decide which one of those two. But first, it's got to be a home game. That's got to be top of the list. Um, other things to talk about. When I was doing my research today for, for baseball, I noticed that uh, Michael Conforto, this is kind of random, but Michael Conforto was still owned in 37% of the leagues, even though he hasn't played a single single inning this year, and he's not even signed. He's not on the team. He's, he's still not signed. He was t supposed to be signed post after the draft, which happened last month, um, and be potentially ready to go down the stretch in September for some team. That was the plan, but he's still not signed. So I, I can't believe he's still owned in 37% of leagues. That's that's crazy. I mean, in Dynasty League, I guess I could see, but I mean, that is there 37% of fantasy, ESPN fantasy baseball players uh, are playing in the Dynasty League? That's crazy. That's high. What else did I want to talk about? Ah, Beast. I watched Beast, the new movie, Idris Elba movie yesterday. Actually, it was pretty good. It was entertaining. Um, I liked it. And uh, I thought the, you know, I'm just, I don't think this is a spoiler. The lion was not real. <laughs> it was computer generated. Uh, I did. I think they did a pretty good job. It looks real enough. Um, and like that lion, like it's, I felt bad for the lion, like pretty early on in the movie, and then it just it didn't get any better for the lion throughout the whole movie. I felt bad for him, but I, I know that you know, Idris Elba, you know he's got he's got children to protect, um, you know survival of the fittest, law of the jungle, all this stuff, right? So so you, you kind of have to under, you kind of understand. You understand why the lion's doing what he's doing. You also understand why the humans are doing what they're doing. Um, even even the even the poachers. I, I understand where they're coming from. Like coming from a first world country, it's like, you know, how could somebody how could somebody do that? But when you live in a third world country like that, where poverty is death, you know, you're gonna do whatever it takes to make some money and survive. And no matter how unethical it may be, I'm not saying that you know that it's okay to be a poacher, but. I understand from their point of view why they're doing what they do what they're doing because they want to survive but I understand all the point of views I felt bad for the lion but um, you know the lion got what was coming to him whether he just whether he you know I felt bad for him or not but you know I, I know that that kind of spoils the movie but I think everybody who goes and watches the movie knows how it's gonna end Right? I mean, we know, even if we want to pretend that we don't know, we know what's going to happen at the end of the movie. So, um, still a good movie, still entertaining, still worth watching. Definitely worth watching, uh, especially with your family, with your kids. And uh, I, I feel like they're trying to promote, like, um, travel, to, travel to Africa. It's so beautiful there, blah, blah, blah. But really, I think they're just trying to, they're scaring away potential tourists with this whole. Um, human killing lion story that they that they got in theaters right now, and uh, I really want to see Orphan First Kill because I really enjoyed the first Orphan, and the sequel should be good. Uh, however, if for whatever reason it's not playing in any Vancouver theaters, I have to go over to Portland to watch it, which doesn't thrill me. Um, it's weird. I, 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 it's just weird how Regal only gets. They don't. They get a lot of movies. They get most movies, uh, but they don't get all the movies that come out in theaters, and it's really weird. Uh, or when they do get it, it's in limited limited showings, like Portland only. And so they're just everywhere. It's, it's Orphan's a big movie, uh, a highly anticipated sequel. So you would think that they would want it everywhere, so they can make their money from it, but. I don't know, whatever. I'll probably end up watching it. Probably end up going to Portland to watch it at some point this week. Um, anyway, let's get to the baseball stuff. Uh, 
three hitters to talk about, and none of them, one, well, one of them's a rookie, but one of them's a rookie who's been around a while. I think I actually talked about him before, but we're going to talk about it again because he's been outstanding. Michael Harris, the outfield for the Braves, definitely needs to be, um, his ownership is at like 70%. That's pretty high, but it should be higher. He is He has been outstanding. He is a guy who has proven uh, over the course of time that he can be a regular outfielder, uh, top three outfielder in fantasy for you this year. There's no reason he should be unowned. He should be 100% owned in every league. Nick Madrigal is back and healthy for the Cubs, and he's not going to provide you a, a whole lot of power. Actually, he's going to provide you no power, but uh, he's going to get on base. He's going to get hits and um, batting average hits lack of strikeouts those are useful to have on your fantasy team he's eligible at second base only and then it's time to talk about albert pujols um it's crazy to think that he's fantasy relevant again at his age and after so long of being fantasy irrelevant but going back to st louis has been huge for him and uh even at 42 um, he's been hit he's been really hitting the ball well for the last couple of weeks and he is eligible at first base and DH. Uh, I know a lot of leagues, especially with the DH being universal in the National League and the American League now, a lot of leagues do have the DH spot in, in your lineup. So Albert Pujols is definitely under worth considering there. For the pitchers, I'm going four days deep streaming for you because I'm filming a day early. So you're getting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday today. Hope you guys appreciate that treat. Monday, I have two for you. Jeffrey Springs versus the Angels and Drew Smiley versus the Cardinals. For Tuesday, I've got two for you as well. Corey Kluber uh, of the Rays versus the Angels and then Edward Cabrera of the Marlins versus the Athletics. There's some confusion on whether Cabrera is going to start tomorrow or Tuesday. Either way, he's definitely worth adding to your team for the week because he will have a two-start week, especially if he starts Monday. He's definitely going to have another start this weekend. If he starts Tuesday, he could potentially start next Sunday. Um, either way, definitely worth adding for either Monday or Tuesday and probably worth holding for the weekend as well. Uh, speaking of the weekend, I had a close matchup in one of my baseball leagues today and I woke up too late to set my lineup because I've got... My old habit was I would always set it the night before I went to bed, uh, but now I've been setting it uh, because I get up so damn early in the morning for UPS. I've been setting it in the mornings um, the next day, like the day of, but today I slept in like past 10 and I missed, uh, I had some starters on my bench and so I'm probably 99% <laughs> sure I'm going to lose my matchup because uh, I didn't get the pitchers in lineup because their game had started uh, after I woke up and set my lineup, unfortunately. Wednesday, big day for streaming five pitchers for you. Matt Manning versus the Giants. Jesus Lozardo had an outstanding start against the Dodgers uh, last week, so this time he gets the much weaker, much uh, better matchup for him in Oakland. Cole Irvin, who's had two very bad starts in a row, but he has pay, faced some good teams in the Astros and the Mariners. Man, it's hard. It's been a long time since I said good team and Mariners in the same sentence without them being opposite. You know, so uh, this time he gets the Marlins. Marlins have a great pitching staff that's keeping them keeping them afloat for the last couple of years, but they're, they're, they they got to get some hitters in, in Miami if they want to be a true contender at some point. And uh, so Cole Irvin should bounce back in that one. George Kirby having an outstanding rookie year for the Mariners. At some point, uh, I think his, his innings are going to get limited. Uh, I, I think Seattle needs to start doing that with Logan Gilbert because he's really struggling. Right now, it's time to start maybe uh, skipping some starts for him. George Kirby is pitching well. Um, I know that they did send him down. They have sent him down. He, he started the year in the minors. They sent him down again um, for a couple of weeks. So they're kind of trying to limit his innings. George Kirby is pitching so well, and the Mariners are still in contention, still trying to get the playoffs. It's going to be hard for them to 
skip starts for him or limit him in any fashion, but uh, it looks like he is good to go for Wednesday against the Nationals. And then Brady Singer, whose ownership is finally creeping up 50%, it's at about 48.8% today. I'm sure by Thursday or by Wednesday it'll be over 50. Uh, so get him now. But I mean, because he's under 50 today when I'm filming, he's eligible for this video by my own arbitrary um, and loose rules. Brady Singer versus the Diamondbacks, definitely uh, worth having on your team. And Thursday, I've got one for you. Patrick Sandoval had an absolutely magnificent start last week. He threw a shutout with nine strikeouts against the, uh, I already forgot who it was, Tigers, Detroit, against Detroit. Um, this time on Thursday, he'll be facing the Rays, much more formidable opponent in Tampa, though. So that's a very um, pitcher-friendly environment. Look at this! Look at the sun in the in the video right here. I love this. This is a great. I picked a perfect time to come out here and film. As but Patrick Sandoval, his ownership is hovering at fifty point one percent. So I'm breaking my own arbitrary and loose rules by putting him in this video. But he's my only streamer option for you on Thursday and um, I'm sure he's gonna be the most popular streaming option across all formats for all people. So if you want him, him, Brady Singer, guys like that, you're probably gonna have to get them now uh, if they're available in your league if you want them for Wednesday or for Thursday. And that is all that I have for you today. For right now, can't wait to start bringing you football content. I know that's what you guys, um, the few viewers I have, that's the, what you care about the most. <sighs> so, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be fun. Um, my fantasy draft rules are pretty much the same, you know, as every year. You know, wait on wait on the quarterback and stock up on running backs. And uh, just try to get the best value with every pick. Don't get attached to names. Get attached to value. Blah, blah, blah. We'll talk about that more starting next week. There was some... Oh, and I wanted to uh, kind of talk about my big, big miss from last year. Allen Robinson. I was in love with Allen Robinson last year. In every fantasy draft, I said draft... I recommended everybody draft Allen Robinson because... It, up to the to the point up to last year, Allen Robinson had been a very very reliable wide receiver every single year. Didn't matter who his quarterback was, didn't matter the offense, didn't matter the coach, didn't matter. Allen Robinson was a wide receiver one who was getting disrespected every single year and getting drafted as a wide receiver two. And so I, I loved him last year, even though I hate the Chicago Bears. I loved Allen Robinson last year, and I was wrong. Allen Robinson was terrible. <laughs> And uh, so I won't be, I don't necessarily hate Allen Robinson this year. I like Allen Robinson. Rams offense should be a great bounce back opportunity for him, especially if Odell Beckham doesn't uh, resign. And uh, so I think he's going to have, he's not going to be the Allen Robinson that he used to be because he's a little older now, but I think he's going to be, he's going to return value on where you're getting him uh, and may even exceed value. At where you're getting him. Those are the kind of players that I like. So yes, that's potentially. I haven't done, I haven't done, done a deep dive into the wide receiver position yet. But Allen Robinson potentially could be one, could be on my love list again. Um, but he's in a much better situation this year. So uh, hopefully, Allen Robinson isn't a huge miss again like he was last year. All right, ending it for sure for now and um go see i'm not gonna go back out to work quite yet but eventually i'm gonna go back out tonight and uh didn't have the best morning the best lunch time i only did like seven deliveries and ended up having to deliver from downtown vancouver to portland and traffic uh into portland for whatever reason today all morning was absolute garbage getting on both interstates into portland traffic was so backed up it was ridiculous. Um, it was weird for a Sunday morning, like you would expect that uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, definitely Monday through Friday evenings, you would expect that. But Sunday morning, it was just, it was just weird. 
it was weird. So uh, I kind of got stuck over there a little bit longer than I wanted to be. Uh, Uber had me going all over town this morning. Usually I, I like to stay in my little, uh, my little area, you know, Southeast Vancouver, maybe go up into Northeast Vancouver, uh, but I don't typically go to the West side of Vancouver often. Um, I mean, some days I go up there and it's fine. Just for whatever reason today, didn't really want to be up there and then traffic uh, was just bad. So hopefully maybe it's mellowed out now. I guess maybe a lot of people went camping this weekend and they were coming home this morning. So hopefully it's mellowed out out there. Uh, I'm just not, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't the best morning, it wasn't, it wasn't super, wasn't feeling it super, um, I don't know, I'm kind of tired today. You know, I, sl I think days I sleep longer than, way longer than I normally do, I always wind up way more tired than normal. So whatever, I keep, I keep saying I'm gonna end it. I keep rambling, I'm done now. Peace, love, and nacho fries. Good luck to you, stay blessed. Have a great day. Enjoy this weather. Um, it's the end of August, who knows how much longer we're gonna have nice weather like this in this neck of the country. So, get outside, go explore, go wander. Uh, you know, what's that, 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 that Ewan McGregor commercial? I forget who it's for, is it Expedia? Uh, I love that commercial, because it's like, 50 years from now or whatever, are we gonna look back on our lives and regret the things we didn't buy? Or are we gonna look back on our lives and regret the places we didn't go? So, you know, ask yourself that. And, uh, you know, travel. Travel's good for the soul. It's good for the mind. And uh, it's good to just see, have those experiences in my opinion. <laughs> all right. Done for sure. I already did all my sign-offs. I'm just gonna end this abruptly.